Is your dating profile doing you a service or a disservice? Are you putting your best foot forward? Should you really have that picture there? Should you really have this saying, that wording? Let's talk about it. Today on the Astound Yourself Dating Show, we have a special guest whose expertise is evidence-based online dating profiles. What does that even mean? Stick around and find out. My name is Richard, and this is the Astound Yourself Dating Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Astound Yourself Dating Show. With me tonight, I have my illustrious co-hostess. What is your name, illustrious co-hostess? It's me again. It's <laughs> Elaine. <laughs> It is her <laughs> Elaine, again, Elaine. Again. Oh uh, my goodness, Elaine Saunders. I'm the right. intuitive matchmaker at Dynamic Introductions. Here again with you, Not Richard. Not just any old matchmaker. She's the intuitive kind. It's right. If you're get a that matchmaker, one. She better be intuitive. I know. Elaine. I intuitively showed up today because it's Thursday. That's right. Every Thursday, <laughs> my intuition tells me to show up here with you. Without even trying, I love it. So, Elaine. You have a, an awesome guest that you found for us again. Yes. I'm yes. really excited to get to, to ask him questions, and I I'm hope that our audience will ask really him questions great. too. And so <laughs> tell us a little bit about him, and then we'll bring him on and, and just fire away. What can you tell us about our special guest today? So the one thing I can tell you about Eric that I find extraordinary is that he – brings to the table, as far as dating advice, scientific proof or standards where no one so far has even brought up the word science or that aspect of dating. In other words, people have opinions. And, you know, lately, in fact, this whole past year, we've heard a lot of opinions, haven't we, Richard? I've shared plenty of them myself, I know. Wait, that's what you see. Everybody's got an opinion. But I like to see facts, scientific proof. Prove it to me. Eric is going to talk to us about things that are proven, statistically proven and shown when it comes to dating. And I like that. I'm excited. Awesome. That means, well, yeah, you can't well, argue with the facts, right? Can't argue with well, proof. You can. Some people do, but they're still facts. Oh, I know they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Let's not get into that right now. So, <laughs> let's try to have uh, fun on the show. Let's uh, let's have you, uh, Elaine, <laughs> introduce Eric, and uh, we'll, we'll just start with the questions. Welcome to the show, Eric. Elaine, Eric, take it away. from Portland, Oregon. Thank you so much. He he weathered a storm. Th thank you, both of you, for having me here. And and so yes, I did. You. Literally weather a storm. We've been without power and we had three days of snow. Can you imagine that scenario? Snow I during the We can imagine it. Trust me, we <laughs> have to come down on us now. So yeah, right. I'm so sorry for you. And we appreciate that you did tough it out for us. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'm so happy to be here. Th thanks again. This is a lot of fun. Um, it's been three minutes and I'm already having fun. So um, yes, you, you, you were asking me you were asking about what is it to be scientifically based, right? What does that mean? With dating. With dating. With dating. Applied to dating. I'm going to let you in on a little secret that I think a lot of um, coaches out there um, purportedly know, um, but reliability tends to go down across the broad array of people calling themselves coaches, right? So there is such a field of science scientific dating there's scientific principles of attraction all that exists okay we don't have a lot of university based professionals doing that work because most of them are working with more severe clinical populations such as going into therapy okay that's typically what you train for but you in fact could you might have come across if you've ever taken intro to site class you might have come across some of the principles that just you know they exist there are people who are studying them so my goal of course was to bridge that to the general population actually make it applicable so that anyone who wants to know can benefit from it ah so this is your approach is is really uh, appealing to people who like to ask the questions of how or why 
So if you're a high or white type of person, pay close attention to the next 25 minutes. Yeah. Should we take notes? Oh, you know uh, what? You can. I can listen I'm to the replay. I'm taking notes, but I remember yeah. tidbits. So that's 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 what <laughs> works for me. Is I remember tidbits, things that captivate the attention, and Eric's going to okay. do that to me. So Eric, right. why don't you start us by start off by telling us how did you get started uh, in coaching in this particular way? Thank you very much for asking me. There are a couple things. Um, for one, studied psychology, love the field, never fell out of love with the field. Um, and I, at the same time, I didn't want to be a marriage family therapist, which is what I sort of aforementioned there, um, kind of where they, they try to lead you into working to clinical populations and that's, that's good. That's fair. But I realized there was a void, a lot of people not being represented there who just wanted to start with the basics. They weren't in the relationship yet. Um, they didn't have the severe clinical needs of counselors necessarily but they still want to know how to be effective at dating. Um, how do you get to the stage where you get the boyfriend or the girlfriend? How can you just make yourself more attractive? There must be someone out there studying this, right? As it turns out, yeah, there's a lot of people out there studying it, not a lot of people reporting it. So that inspired me to want to go ahead and begin my career as a dating coach. There's another half to that though. Sometime, sometime around while this was happening, I also realized pickup artistry was trending. Yes. Uh -huh. And pickup artistry, um, aside, I mean, there's certainly ethical issues with doing so, but it, it got so big that a lot of women, just women in general, were able to report to me, I can't walk through Central Park without being approached by 10 different would-be pickup artists because it's so trendy right now that men are now getting out there and, and trying to do these programs. Is that um, because everyone's they're reading they're books they're about it? Because Central Park is, is so small. I know it's not small. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, can you say it again? Oh, I was just kidding, saying is that because Central Park is so small or because there's oh. so many pickup artists, 10 pickup artists trying to walk across, that's, that's wow. Or, or even just while you're transpiring across a city block to catch your next train, right? Yeah. Women are talk, talking about constantly being approached by what they can easily identify as would-be pickup artists because there was so much excitement around this. Um, and I have several clients now who've actually done the pickup artist programs. Um, as it turns out, they wasted all their money and it wasn't effective. Uh, so they came to a dating coach, right? So the other part of it was to sort of combat pickup artistry. Uh, but my service is for both men, for women, right? Um, I just realized there was too much excitement going around with pickup artistry with all the books and the purported online communities out there. Um, and, and frankly, a lot of it just isn't effective, if completely unethical. Yeah, a little unethical. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I have read some of some of the books, and and at least some of the earlier books seem to have a lot of trial and error involved, a lot of lot of um, studying of what works and doesn't work, but define work. So for me, there were a lot of things that that seemed to to produce a certain result, but at the same time, my biggest objection to it was having to memorize what to say. So in a way it's it's almost like you're losing your individuality by memorizing what to say which is so when so many people started using the same stuff they were like oh yeah you wanted those because there was no originality to yes. it. and the other thing is pick up artistry might make you effective at getting the girl but it doesn't make you effective at keeping the woman and and um so I'm not here to dump on pickup artistry. Sure, many of many guys who feel like otherwise they would have never gotten the time of day from a certain caliber of woman have pickup artistry to thank for having whatever experience they've had with women. But I think that's one of the shortcomings is it shows you how to it shows you how to catch prey, but not to to farm a relation, not foster a relationship. And and I think both are important. You gotta catch the relationship, so to speak, but you gotta foster it and grow it together. You're absolutely right. Um, one 
major flaw, if, if nothing else with pickup artistry, is that it got too popular, that it's now easily yes. recognizable. Women yeah. can tell when you're nagging them. They know that word. They know when you're <laughs> yes. read the stuff. So if this ever did work, it's much less effective now simply because it's already into the limelight. It's been publicized and people read about it and know about it. It's yeah. time to, to start something new. Do something right. a little bit different, right? It's just, again, ethics issues aside, it just isn't effective. It simply isn't. It's it's too oh. publicized. So let's talk about you uh, and not have the whole show be about people who are not here. So let's talk about <laughs> more about more about you. What's different about your approach to coaching? I know one of the things that you do is you, you have a, a panel of people who take a look at a person's online dating profile and give feedback. So it's not just one opinion or two, but it's feedback from dozens of people, if not more, then you report that feedback. Tell us more about that. Yes, that's right. So evidence-based, meaning that there's evidence behind it, right? We want group effects. We love numbers. Um, if you can go talk to a broad array of different dating coaches and you will get a lot of contradictory opinions in the end and you might not know what to do with that. That's not because they're wrong. That's just because there's different techniques that work for different people. Um, their opinions, they're subjective, of course. My, my goal in asking this question, well, how do I get around something just being opinionated? How do I make it more accurate, more precise? And the answer to that question was, of course, ask lots of people instead of just one. See if you can get group effects there, right? So, yeah, they, it, I call it a profile review, um, and it is. It's quite literally the profile review, but it's really a personal review because you can extrapolate those same lessons from your profile and apply them into in-person interactions as well, right? So it's not just your profile, but you're going to be learning about how are you presentable just in any, in any arena. Um, I like that. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I'm saying I, I like that. It's it's um, it's almost you get the benefit of quote an Amazon review without having to go on a bad date. <laughs> so your reputation is not tarnished. You can kind of know what to correct before you go out there and and blow it with somebody who could potentially be a good candidate. That's right. And I'm also going to add, you need your reviews to be coming from strangers. You cannot rely on the biased opinions of your peers. You probably know that already. Um, just like if you had to hire a counselor, you don't want to do a counsel. You don't want to do counseling with someone you know, right? They can't be objective. So you you need the stranger element. You need the professional element. Um, it's true. Yeah, people yeah. people don't know what's good and what's not good until you really uh, approach it to uh, present it to strangers and a lot of strangers. Um, ultimately, anyone's individual preference or opinion means very, very little to me. What I want to know is what is applying for the majority for the general population. And so I can never make a conclusion with 100% accuracy with 100% validity. It's just not possible. But I do I do see a lot of really interesting trends. And I, I do get feedback from my profile panel reviews where I found that 70% of men really dislike that bullet list approach you took in your profile. It was over formalized. I felt, they felt like they weren't communicating with a person, but with a resume, um, which means 30% of men reading that didn't mind it. And that's just fine. But at least now we know what the, what's going on with the majority, right? That's right. Makes That's sense. Right. I, I think the people who are into statistics in our audience are absolutely loving this because as you're saying this, I'm thinking about the term that I, that the few terms I recall from taking statistics class, like standard deviation and, and uh, all these other things. And I can hear that being applied in the way that you, that you do what we'll call your, your research. Uh, or the feedback that people get. It's not just one off here, because you could have a little one off here or one off there. You're looking at the center of the bell curve to see what's going on there. Yeah, and of course, the the problem with studying people, this is an inherent problem, is that we can't we can't confine people to labs for long durations and put them in controlled <laughs> environments and research. That's probably them. illegal too, right? <laughs> no, no it's, it's, it's not legal. Um, 
there's two there's so many confounding factors right people they have different jobs they live in different environments they have different interactions every day so you're always going to have some error there and that's why you never can get a conclusion that applies to 100 percent of people um how should you present yourself to this person might be a little bit different to the next person right you're never going to have 100 percent, but we do get i do get a lot of strong probability 70 percent 80 percent and then the rest is error the rest we don't exactly know why and what's going on there's just too much in influencing any individual life 80 percent on a test is a strong b i'll take it any day than a, than a d minus so 80 percent is is a uh, is very good let's let's aim for that before I ask Elaine to present you with the next question, I want to say hello to a few people who have commented and, and are watching the show. Of course, Victoria is one of our regulars here. Hello, hello, Victoria. Thank you for tuning in. Good to see you. We also have, uh, um, well, her name's not coming up. I don't know why, but we also have Ale. Ale is tuning into the show. Hello, Ale. And I see Claudia. Claudia, 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 I think it's a new name. We haven't seen you here before, Claudia. Hello. Well, Welcome I know Claudia, so Thank not new to me. This is an old friend of mine. Not, she's not old. And Victor, <laughs> and Victor is also somebody we haven't seen before. So hello, Victor. And Carla is watching. Hi, Carla. Yeah. And Victor was at our um, event the other night when we were in Zoom oh, with us. Uh, okay, I remember Victor from the event like the other night. Yep. And. There's this lady here, Heather. I, I'm very familiar with who that is. Hi, honey. Heather. Somewhat. <laughs> is watching the show tonight. <laughs> and I think Victoria over here has, oh, she has a comment. Do you have a question? Victoria's comment is she loves the idea of a personal profile review with applied research results. And ah. I think Victoria particularly loves that because of her, of her professional background. She's in the, the health field. And so, uh, mm -hmm where science and research does matter. So thank you for your comment, Victoria. Uh, Elaine, I'll let you take it away and ask Eric the, the, uh, the next uh, uh, question. So in um, talking about your practice, um, something that really stood out to me, and it was something that I've, I've thought about doing too, um, but I have also often thought that maybe you can get me in a little bit of trouble. So I've always kind of hesitated um, and I'm not sure if you, I, I've never gotten into it with you deeply. I've kind of waited for tonight to ask you this question. I'm not sure if it's you who actually, or if you hire out somebody to do the, um, the mock date. <laughs> I'm oh, intrigued. Dating, yes. Yeah. Like I've well, been well, tempted. Sure I really, mock dating is to us. Yeah. Tell, tell me about the mock date. So um, to answer your question, your first question, um, when I was when I was starting up, I did the mock dates for the female clients. Really? And I now I now hire someone else for that as well because I decided that um, just professionally it was really important as uh, to keep myself as coach, right, versus mm -hmm. the person going on the mock date. Right. Um, now for the male clients, I also have a female co-coach who does the mock dates. Right. And um, I haven't gotten any any trouble with this. Actually, everything has gone very smooth. Um, to I'm not on your staff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no, everything's gone remarkably smooth. I've never had a problem. Um, everything's highly anonymized, um, very confidential, and very efficient. Um, uh, all my practitioners, they all use you know burner numbers and things that way in case there's a, an unscrupulous you know, person who comes into play. Later. Oh, oh. No. But yeah, so, well, but, so can you screen your people? I mean, do you screen your people before they go out on their mock dates? Like, or so do I, I'm doing the screening as and I've worked with them for a few sessions. Okay, I okay. I was going to say, I wouldn't but... advise you to do any mock dating with anybody that you haven't kind of done a little bit of a background situation or at least a verification of who, who are these people. Everyone goes through my assessment, so it's okay. never, yeah, it's it's not like a Tinder, Tinder mock date. Tinder, yeah, no, that's just not going to happen, right? Um, <laughs> and the mock dating, it's it's not for the purpose of having a fun date necessarily. Oh, um, it has an applied purpose, right? It's part of my program, so I don't want to just send, uh, randomly send people out yeah. on mock dates. No, without. I know. I'm just teasing. Yeah, of course, of course. So um, here's what you need to understand about 90% of clients of, mm -hmm. of inquiries that come to me, 
don't know what their problem is. They just know that they're having one. Right. Yeah. So we take a diagnostic approach. And the mock dates used to be optional. They're now required at some point oh. within the first few sessions i will have you do the mock date because okay. as i did them i realized how powerful they were to get that diagnostic data i needed given that most clients have no idea what their problem is to begin with right makes sense yeah you go on the mock date and you get an outsider's perspective mm -hmm. sometimes that's things as mundane as table manners um but you'd also be surprised how often i get that feedback Someone had horrible table manners. Right. Um, yeah, and it, it it sounds kind of juvenile. Or swallowing. That's not that's not okay. <laughs> no, I mean it, it's it's just amazing how both women and men don't know this stuff. And what what you might be doing is you're killing the date by just doing one that you were you're picking up the bowl and and slurping from it. Right. Just one thing that you never thought twice <laughs> about. Right. Do and, you know I I know somebody the, soup the first yeah. date. Then. <laughs> do that. I know somebody who's, who did that. Wow. It, it happens more often than you think. And in, in some contexts, that's absolutely okay. But I really love that feedback because these are all very fixable things. If only they know about them, right? If only someone would yeah. come on. Wow. Yeah, so the mock dates are really important in that regard. And then uh, sometimes we find out some deeper issues. Their, their conversations um, unintentionally are maybe starting to rear around their ex a little bit more. Yes. That's that's not where they were trying to go to, but we're able to, to extrapolate some things. Okay, so there's some insecurities going on there, right? And right. as it turns out, talking about your ex all the time was a sour note. And when I do the feedback, when I give them the feedback from the, from the mock date, they would be surprised. I don't actually remember talking about those things. I guess it just came yes. out. Right? Yes. So, this yeah. is just like probably it's such an automatic thing that they default to either because they're excited or because they're nervous, they're uncomfortable, that they just default to it and don't even realize that they're they're doing that, doing something that could be a turnoff. How yeah, exciting well, most, that is. Most problems can be fixed. Um, some of them can be very easily fixed. It's just a matter of you don't have the insight. You don't have the self-perception to identify them. Most of us don't, right? You need to have yes. an outsider identify this for you, the perceiver. This is great. This is like when you take your car to the dealership because something's going on and they plug it into the computer and the code comes out. And then, then you say, well, big, the code says blah, blah, blah. So it's almost as if the person you send on the mock date is the reader. And then they come out with the code and you say, well, this is what the code says. And this is an easy, this is an easy the solution. This is what you do about it. I think that is actually so a cool. perfect analogy. Thank well, they you. have the like checkpoint. You just come to me. Right? When you go, they have a checkpoint thing where you go in yes. and they check yes. all these things. Well, yep, yeah, you did this out. right. He did that right. He did that right. But he wasn't so good when it came to this. So that's interesting. Well, I, Do you have a checklist that you kind of go over? Um, so it, it depends on the mock date. So everyone goes on this, what I call an introductory mock date. It's completely unstructured. Mm -hmm. I just want you to go to dinner and have fun and be conversational. I don't want to give you any prompts and I don't want you hyper focusing on anything. Just be yourself, right? That's right. Yeah, so for diagnostic purposes, that's what I try to go off of. People go on the mock dates later on to work on more structured issues. Um, as we've identified problems, of course, we want to fix those problems and give them a practical solution. A very common example for me, and what you might do on a structured mock date is go out dancing. And um, it's not because we want you to get good at dancing. Men love a woman who can dance. Women love a man who dance. That's true. But that's not the point. Um, in this instance, it, a lot of clients struggle with walking up to someone else and talking to them. They're shy. If you go to common dance venues where it's socially acceptable, hey, would you like to dance? That's a really great way, a very safe baby step for a lot of people. And yeah. what my professional, what my coach is doing in that instance is she's sort of monitoring this process. You know, were they able to go ahead and confidently approach people? If not, um, she or he is right there to help them out with that, right? To encourage them and to give them some practical uh, tips on how to improve. Right. So that brings the question up to me, uh, Eric. Now that we have a pandemic on our hands, do you have you figured out a way to have the mock dates take place over Zoom, or do you have just more more structure to have it happen in person but safely? Oh, um, so of course, yeah, specifically. Um, 
referencing the pandemic we're going through? Um, yes, that is a great question. Um, ultimately, I cannot make my coaches go and do something they're not comfortable doing. Um, with that being said, most of them, for the most part, um, in fact, entirely, they've been willing to continue the mock dates. Uh, we've got outdoor dining. There's options like that to help keep them safe. Um, I think the challenge more so has just been trying to keep up with what our state government is doing and the new restrictions that are constantly yes. coming in and out of play. And that's very fluid and it changes very quickly. So um, when this whole thing started, we were still running mock dates. I had rules, of course, that it needed to be outdoors. Um, mm -hmm. Every, we want to keep everyone safe, even if the client doesn't feel the need for it. Um, and very inter very interestingly, I um, oftentimes would not only, of course, have the client wear their mask and be prepared for pro COVID precautions, but also have them explain to my coach, why did they choose this venue? What was purposeful about this choosing in, regarding, um, in regard to the pandemic, right? Um, what safeguards were they thinking about? Because I want people thinking about the safety of the person they're going on the date with, paying them that respect. So that was part of the spiel that I assigned to clients. Um, in terms of remote mock dates, they're possible in theory. I have not had to apply them yet. Originally, when I set this up, mock dating, uh, I, I certainly work with people from anywhere in the country, uh, but mock dating was just for the locals, right? That's, that's, local. that's what I had Excellent. going, so. Excellent. So uh, here's a question we have here from Heather. Her, the, her question is, do clients know they're on a mock date? And if so, does it impact the way they behave and your results? Do they think I'm just going to do something nicer, be different because I'm, I'm on a mock date and I'm being watched, so to speak? This is a test, so I got to behave. Yeah. That's a very good question. They do know that they're on a mock date. I realize there's sort of this trope about the, um, the dating coach or or some kind of liaison who's maybe secretly surveilling them, watching from afar at a different table in the restaurant, or maybe um, they put a mic on them. I don't do any of that stuff, of course. Um, and you, you are correct that when people know they're being watched, they tend to act differently. Uh, my approach to that, of course, is um, I need to be upfront. I want people to know that they are, in fact, with someone who works for me. There's no tricks. There's no deception here. Um, we want that to stay very ethical in that regard. Yes. Um, so they, they do know, and what I just encourage people, especially for the first mock date when it's just strictly unstructured introductory, um, just be yourself. There's no evaluation going on. That's what I tell clients, and that is true. I will go ahead and give them feedback as it comes back to me post mock date, you know, one week later when we meet again. Um, but there's not any type of real time feedback happening during the mock date. So it's completely instruction. And I do just encourage people to be themselves and to relax. The people who work for me are very relaxing people to get to know. Usually it's very strange for the first five minutes. And then after that, they're completely at ease. And that's that's how I hire my practitioners, actually. So it's like having a mystery shopper for your date. If uh, for those of you who ever worked in retail, the, the mystery shopper was the person who would just come in. You didn't know who they were until you got the report later. Except this, you actually know what's happening, and, and um, it's not there to get you and make you fail. It's there to actually see what you're doing that's hurting your cause, how to improve it. In the short time we have left, Eric, uh, I want to just see what. I'll present it with Eric's, uh, I'm not Eric, with Victor's question. Victor says, basically Victor's question is, the person who is uh, representing you, the person who is on the mock date with the client, do they, what type of personality are they portraying? Are they quote unquote acting or did you just show up as themselves the way they would show up on a date if they were going on a date with the client? Yeah, I, I hire people and I send them out for being genuine. There is no portrayal in that regard. They're completely yeah. being genuine selves. I hire people who are very gentle, uh, gentle and love to listen to other people. Yeah. I think um, maybe it would help help you to understand a little um, if you think, why do you hire a teacher? Well, someone who loves working with children, right? Why do you Who do you hire as a counselor? Um, someone who loves talking to people, loves is fine just hearing about their problems. Um, wants to provide a helping hand and really just bonds with other people by nature. Yes, you, you can train into it, of course, um, but ultimately the people who do this 
are the people who are naturally good at it. And that's what I try to aim for. So there's no, there's no acting or anything like that. Yes, thank you. That's very clear, very concise. We love that. Elaine, any, I, I feel like I've taken over here and I took Eric and took him, keep him all to myself. <laughs> That's okay. Um, you know, it's interesting because uh, Victoria um, had the comment up that she would like a dating diagnosis. Um, and it's interesting. I would almost like to see if I could step out to that challenge and see if I could find somebody for her to diagnose a date with her. Would she be open to that if I can find somebody to step up into that challenge? <laughs> well, Victoria, you know what to do? Send Elaine a private message. We'll also- Great, we'll send me a message and if I can arrange for that, which would be up to that challenge. And then we'll, we could we'll do a show about it. And then, um, and you can reach out to Eric also and see- I think it's a great idea. Out. Maybe this is something we should do. The, day, the dating diagnosis show. Is <laughs> Thank have you. a live show of a dating that Eric, no, we have you come on once a month and it's the day the dating diagnosis uh, episode <laughs> once go. a month. There we go. Well, um, our time is already up, if you can believe it. That was a, a fast paced, interesting. Did, it went fast. Thank you Busy. for joining us this evening. Uh, sorry, so, we got <laughs> so Eric, go ahead and tell us how people can find you. Yeah, um, so it's very, talk about memorable, portlanddatingcoach.com. Okay, I'm the dating coach in Portland. Wow. Uh, as it goes, right? Yeah, so that one's pretty yeah. simple. Check out the website. Um, if, if you want to give me a call, anyone watching this right now gets a free consultation. I'm oh, going to answer the phone really? and just talk to anyone. Yeah, it's, it's able Victoria. Yeah, and, and that helps me evaluate a little bit, of course, more about your situation and if it's even appropriate for coaching. Um, not everyone's situation is, but 503-208-8745. You can send me a text message as well. Mention that you are on the show with Elaine and Richard, so I know. And um, I've, of course, I'll give you a call and I will arrange that free consultation and I'll, I'll do what I can for you. I think Thank Elaine, you so much, Eric. Elaine might need that. Elaine, <laughs> calling you. <laughs> well, Elaine, tell everybody where they can find you in your intuitive matchmaking service. Yes, you can find me right here on Facebook. Right here. Facebook and on the internet at www.dynamicintroductions.com. So Excellent. find me here every Thursday with Richard. Find me on Facebook. Very easy to find or find me on the web. There you have it, everybody. And if you're looking for me, I'm here on the Astound Yourself dating page. Or you can also go to grichard360.com. By the way, tomorrow I'm doing another special show with intimacy coach Courtney DC. You saw see that. Me here. Yep. I'm doing I a show love that. tomorrow on navigating the treacherous waters of online dating. Say treacherous oh, yeah. three times in a row. See what oh, happens. Yeah. And so don't miss that. That's tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. All right. Are you doing shark sounds in the background there, Elaine? <laughs> thank you. Well, everybody, I want to thank you all for watching the show. Thank you all for coming. We'll be back next week with another great show. And I want to thank Eric one more time for joining us tonight. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Eric, we have to have you come.